Hey guys, um, today was a really good day. We finally had a nice psychopharmacology medication review. Finally, um, I felt that it was really worth it and I'm trying to do a uh, post-class review so it can really sink in into my brain. So I'm just gonna talk about my notes. Um, not super exciting, but uh, it's gonna really help uh, with, I don't know, my prescribing when I get into my own clinical practice. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about mood and anxiety medications, how to subscri uh, prescribe, and then antipsychotics, uh, benzodiazepines, other anxiolytic and hypnotics, uh, and then medications for ADHD. Like to hear it? Here it goes! Uh, mood and anxiety medications. Neurotransmitters must cross the neuron synapse chasm in order to work. Um, illicit drugs compete for receptor sites. Suboxone is a more precipitant ISO. Uh, watch out for that if your patients are a substance abuser or substance use disorder, then it might not be a good idea uh, because your neurotransmitters are going to be occupied or neurotransmitter receptors are going to be occupied. Uh, Suboxone is a more persistent receptor blocker so then you could try for your uh, substance use disorder patients first. Uh, if you give SSRI, note that it has a delay before it starts working, roughly around four to six weeks. Uh, I'll explain the pathophysiology of that later. Uh, GABA is primarily a neurotransmitter inhibitor. Uh, benzos, however, enhance GABA. It's, uh, GABA is, if I can remember right, is um, gamma aminobutyric acid. I'm not sure about the first one. It's not important. Anyway, uh, dopamine can work on motor reward and cognition. While well, butrin is good for sub substance abuse due to the reward system. Norepinephrine originates in the locus originalis and increases arousal and attention. Um, I don't know if I pronounced that right. Uh, serotonin is mostly in the gastrointestinal system, so it originates in the caudal and rostal dorsal Ralph nucleus. I think I butchered that. Anyway, getting off meds abruptly is bad because it creates a distant simulation syndrome. I have to look that up. Uh, and also diarrhea. The history. Um, Mayoi, the monoamine oxidase inhibitors, came out first. It still works, but you have to watch out for that tyramine. Um, uh, uh, too low. You have to have a low tyramine diet because it'll interact with that. And by tyramine... Uh, the, old, the two foods that come to mind is always aged cheese. I think Stahl said that it was a myth that patients can't eat processed cheese because that new dairy is okay. Um, but aged old cheese for people who like to do whining and dining is not a good idea because it has a lot of tyramine. That includes also wine and beer. So not a lot of fun stuff, but if your patients are pretty moderate and are good about avoiding tyramines, it's, it's okay. There's also medication for people that take, uh, to, or people have to avoid tyramine, but um, that's besides the point. Anyway, the monoamine oxidase inhibitors came out first uh, as an antidepressant. However, because of the interactions, it's not very well used, but it still works and some people do use it, usually as a last result. Uh, tricyclic antidepressants, TCAs, also came out in the 50s, but are a high risk for overdose. So many prescribers just completely um, avoid it in general. Prozac came in the 80s, but comes with drug-drug interactions, uh, especially serotonin syndrome. It has a long half-life, so that's good for teenagers, due to less medication interactions, and also still in their system. There haven't been any original medications with a new... Uh, molecular backbone since 2013 so anything past that will probably be just me too drugs that um, are only created by pharmacists or um, pharmaceutical companies big pharma just so they can renew the uh, patent and charge more um, as far as Mayoi's again selegilin elder pile is um, and ENS is a trade name, but Ensem is a six milligram patch and it is better for people who really can't follow the tyramine free diet or, ty or low tyramine diet. Uh, some examples of TCA are amitriptyline, Elevil, nortriptyline, just tofernil. And it's best to always go low and slow. Use small doses for people who just have to have it. Um, but yeah, again, try to just avoid it in general, avoid TCAs. Um, 
SSRIs Prozac, Zoloft, or TX Satine, also known as Trentellus, is the newest SSRI, Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitors. Uh, Luvox is usually used, was used for OCD, but it's no longer in the market. It was instead replaced with Paxil, but don't use Paxil on teenagers due to discontinuation syndrome. It also stops patients from taking anything else. So if you prescribe that first and it fails, you're screwing your patient because the insurance companies won't approve anything else. Since it was already on the top. So start from the bottom, uh, take lesser, um, less expensive and less efficacious drugs and see if that works well enough. Um, so Alexa may have a QTC issue, long QT syndrome, but watch out for that. Always have your patients take EKGs. Um, Lexapro is born from Selexa for anxiety, so it's just a newer medication. And again, another Me Too medication that's just um, so the pharmaceutical companies can charge more. Um, Lexapro is a big favorite. It's a newer drug. I think it was the latest um, antidepressant drug um, on the market, and it is a newer drug, and it's good for faster efficacy and less side effects. So Lexapro, escitalopram, always a good idea. Um, if you want to prescribe low-dose Prozac, uh, stay below 10 milligrams. Uh, you can try it every other day if it's if you still want to go even lower than that. Um, Trintellus, I'll have to look that up more. So always watch the SSRIs for serotonin syndrome. You must look at all med interactions, especially for your geriatric patients. Try to talk and befriend a pharmacist. They will be your best friend. Um, SNRIs, selective norepinephrine, norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, include duloxetine, which is Cymbalta. It's good for neuropathic pain as well. And then desvenlaxifene, Pristique, is also from venlaxifene, which is called Effexor. And they're all me too drugs. Pristique, 50 milligrams, is for depression use only and is an adjunctive drug, not a monotherapy first line drug. Atypical medications include bupropion, Welbutrin, also known as Zyban. Um, they're all bupropion though, but Zyban is used for something else. Um, they're good for those with anxiety. They're good for adolescents as well. But if the patient complains of like brain zaps, or, you know, little um, neuroleptic uh, uh, syndrome or symptoms, I feel like electricity, take them off of it. It's very stimulating. You could add Welbutrin to Zoloft for those with not with um, who aren't really. Uh, reacting well enough to Zoloft, it's not effective enough. And you can use it as an adjunctive treatment to also circumvent low libido side effects, which Zoloft is really known for. Uh, Zyban is for smoking addiction, as people try to use, or professor uses Propropion SR150 milligram, uh, which is a generic for a cheaper alternative. Um, so you, don't, you can help save your patient's insurance money. Um, let's see. Tobamax may be used to offset the weight increase if you're using it as an adjunct to Zoloft, but this is off-brand and not preferred by the professor. Well, Butrin should not be used for those seizure disorders. So if you have a seizure disorder, forget about Wellbutrin. Um, I'm gonna go a little bit more, a couple more minutes, and then I'm just gonna stop at the SSRIs. I'll talk about the other stuff later because um, my school break is, is to get back to class. See? Okay. Uh, Remeron, a complex serotonin and histamine activity, but there is weight gain risk. So give it to little old ladies that can't go to sleep because the histamine activity is going to make them drowsy. But be careful that they don't have any extra psychosomatic symptoms or you know, if they're like a fall risk, not a good idea. Uh, old mood stabilizers. Lithium is still a tried and true medication since I think the 70s. Um, it's it's very effective and drug companies don't want to research it because we know that it works already but you must take uh, lithium levels I think the lithium levels should be between 50 and 100 milligrams per deciliter um, really anything over 25 um, is starts to become a little bit toxic um, I heard that 25 milligram per deciliter isn't is your um, optimal level for lithium but I gotta recheck that Excuse me. <laughs> uh, make sure you draw the lithium tw ten about you know twelve hours after your last dose. Tegretol is used for acute mania and bipolar mania. They're good for highly irritable males. 
Um, valproic acid is not for acute mania. It is for pregnancy and it has a big pregnancy precaution. So just stay away from that. Otherwise your childbearing patient will have, I think I heard uh, the congenital deformities. Um, the biggest one is like, um, which is the one with the, that creates a hole in the septal part of the heart. Uh, you, somebody email it to me because I forgot or look it up. Um, it also causes weight gain like Cyprexa. Uh, Lamictal is preferred for mood stabilizers. Start with 25 milligrams POQ day and work your way up. Watch for allergic reactions, which is usually evident right away. Be careful of this because if the patient has Stevens-Johnson syndrome, it's way too late. Um, check with the OBG also for pregnancy precautions. Topamax, sometimes used for bipolar off-label. Um, or use 25 milligrams as an adjunct for people who have weight gain, which I just mentioned. Uh, creates cognitive dulling though, so watch that, especially for kids that are in school, and um, as well as metabolic acidosis and kidney stones. Um, yeah, uh, let's leave it. Let's leave it for that for now, and um, I'll talk about the rest of the notes later. Bye.